You know, violence and trauma don't occur in a vacuum. Uh, they spread more easily when there are gaps between our services, between the healthcare system and the education system and economic and community development and other systems that occur to support young children. So while I was working on home visiting, I've moved over now to work on another part of that system. And I'm just going to give you a quick update because there are very few good things happening for children in this country, but there was a good thing that happened last session. We were able to get $250 million for something called preschool development grants. It's a very small down payment on a larger presidential initiative, which would be $75 billion, which would fund home visiting, child, better child care, and better preschool. We're going to get that too, but right now we have a small down payment. And the good news is that all states can apply, and Texas has sent in their intent to apply. So we are very excited. We will be able. We'll have money to fund about 15 states, and we have intents from 30 states. And I was just so glad when Texas sent theirs in. The other program that I oversee at the department is called Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge Fund, and that has a whole lot to do with child abuse and neglect because that is helping to pull together all the systems that serve young children. Uh, we're able. We fund 20 states with a billion dollars. It's quite an extensive and complicated program. Unfortunately, Texas did not apply for that. But the learnings that are coming out of the states like Maryland and Illinois and Washington and Oregon uh, are applicable in every state. And so we're very much hoping that we're able to take what we learn in these 20 states and apply it to states around the country. So I wanted to give you that quick update. But mainly, I was here to introduce my husband. Um, <laughs> I have known Lloyd since I was 20 years old. I met him when he was running for student body president at the University of Texas. Uh, he got my vote. I got, his, I got his heart, and the rest is history. There are three things I want you to know about Lloyd is you won't find anybody who works harder. I had somebody in Congress tell me the other day that he is the most prepared person. There's a story that, that went around years ago that even on Christmas Day after we'd opened all the family gifts and we'd gotten our kids who were young then down for naps, he went down to the Capitol and was upset because it was closed. <laughs> so he works hard. He's prepared. He's the kind of person you want behind you. He also is always there for kids. He started out as a young lawyer working on the Edgewood case on school finance, and he has maintained that, and that's why he was able to get that. There were very few things coming out the session. He got the Child Care Commission uh, or the Child Children's Commission through. He was there because he really cares about kids. He cares so very, very deeply. And the third thing is you can really trust him. Uh, my friends tell me they love having Lloyd represented because they don't have to send a letter to remind him how to vote because they know he's always voting the right way. Uh, there was a story that went around a long time ago about him also in terms of being trustworthy that you could play poker with him over the telephone. <laughs> so anyway, I have a great time living with him, but mainly it's really, really exciting to live with someone who cares so deeply about children and acts on their beliefs. So, Lloyd. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, honey, for that introduction. Uh, Kathy actually asked who was the highest ranking official federally in our family, and I said, how could there be any doubt uh, <laughs> that Libby uh, is the highest ranking official in our family on many things? Uh, <laughs> But uh, we are pleased to be here with you and uh, salute, of course, Madeline. And it, it is amazing that in the legislature we have had and the legislature we have right now with the many challenges uh, that, that Ruth deals so effectively with up there, that Madeline has been able to squeeze out in these tough budget times with the help of many members of our Bear County legislative delegation some additional dollars to address these problems. Uh, and that she continues working, as she said, uh, with some folks uh, at the state level to try to see that more resources are allocated this way. Uh, when you think about the challenges we face and the numbers that uh, have been outlined uh, by Madeline, 
uh, about the dimensions of this problem. I think one of the main things is to keep hope alive, that there is the potential uh, to do more and do better by our children here in the state of Texas. And, and when you look around, I, I noticed uh, in visiting with some of you at the coffee break uh, a little while ago, at table after table here, there are people really making a difference in the lives of children. Uh, and uh, we can talk about this in Washington in terms of billions and trillions, and we can see the numbers of how big the problem remains. But I know table by table, uh, individual by individual here, you're making a difference one child, one family at a time. And so much of what we are trying to do is to have uh, our neighbors be aware of this problem other than when they hear about a disaster that's occurred. We just had this awful one out uh, northwest of Austin in Cedar Park uh, with uh, the discovery in a shallow grave of a little boy buried by his mother and her boyfriend. Uh, and it's just gotten page after page of coverage as with some terrible incidents that occurred here in San Antonio about a year ago. Uh, and if we could keep people focused other than just by the drama and of the tragedy a little longer at what the things are we could do to prevent these horrible situations from happening, how much better off uh, our entire state would be. Uh, Madeline and uh, Kathy uh, with the great work that, is, uh, that they've been doing and the other groups here talking about it, if not moved by your heart, moved by your pocketbook in terms of how much uh, failing to deal with these issues cost us economically. Uh, we, at the, st at the national level, and I'm just going to touch very briefly because I know we're running a little behind schedule on some of the things happening and mainly not happening at the national level. I was pleased we were able to get the commission to eliminate child abuse and uh, neglect uh, f fatalities uh, approved and signed into law. And a number of you were at the first hearing, first field hearing that they conducted down at UTSA downtown. Uh, they accepted my invitation to start here in San Antonio, knowing that we have a really big problem here, but we also have many people trying to contribute to a solution. Uh, Madeline came down, we had a number of local advocates, and since that time, the commission has moved on across the country to Tampa, to Detroit, to Denver. They're about to have a hearing in Vermont, I've been encouraging them and asking my colleagues to encourage them to come out with their recommendations early, to give us some interim recommendations. They just extended, uh, as they are entitled to do under the Act, for about another half a year to uh, prepare their work and get it to us, but I hope they will have some information to us early, not only about uh, what they found is our greatest needs, but where they have found uh, programs that are really working well that we can build on uh, and, and share best practices uh, of what we're doing here in San Antonio that works and what may be working at the other end of the country that works that we can try to replicate here. Uh, when uh, Congress does act, I think we already know that some of the areas that need improvement the most. Uh, some of you wave from CPS there in the, at the back table, and I salute you for the efforts that you make. Uh, the Texas Monthly recently described the tough work at CPS as the perfect pressure cooker, understaffed, overworked, high stress. Many of you saw the report earlier in the year of a 38% uh, turnover of people that quit within their first year of job. What business here in San Antonio could Valero or USAA or any of the other private enterprises uh, that we count on for economic growth in this community, HEB, can they get by on a turnover of 38% of year, a year in the first year? And when folks see a kind of dead end and not a career path there, uh, they're overwhelmed and then they're asked to handle uh, such tremendous caseloads. Uh, and so the finger is immediately pointed at CPS when something goes wrong, and sometimes that's where the finger needs to be pointed. But we're, we're, we've set up a system uh, that is designed 
uh, to fail for some of our children under this system. And I think much of our focus has to be on getting more resources there so that they can do their job ba better, uh, provide a career for the people that are willing to commit to service there and meet these needs. Uh, it was good to see uh, representatives locally from the Family Nurse Partnership here because I certainly agree with uh, Madeline that that's one of the areas in which federal resources and additional state and local resources can be most wisely invested. We struggled to get the home visiting program continued. It was part of the Affordable Care Act, the much discussed Obamacare, well one key, provi one key of many provisions uh, was a home visiting program, and it would have expired this September. We were able to get it extended for only one other, one more year. It will have to be renewed in March of next year, and it will be a struggle to get the finances we need for that program. I think it's particularly important that we do so, and hearing the statistics up here that we're serving only about 5% of Texas families that's true uh, pretty much across the country. There are many more resources that could be allocated uh, to the uh, program, I think, with to great advantage. About the only uh, new piece of legislation that we were able to get through, and it only passed the Senate about a week ago, was the Preventing Sex Trafficking and Strengthening Families Act, uh, which is designed to provide more support for kids, uh, particularly that are aging out of foster care, who many times are targeted uh, in trafficking. A series of trafficking bills uh, were approved in Congress. I think they're a step forward. They don't involve uh, significant new resources. And ironically, uh, most of the speech making about it in the House occurred the same week that people were seeking to undermine the 2008 anti-trafficking provisions for unaccompanied minors at our border. I think the provisions have to apply to all of these children and that children who have come here from violence from Honduras or El Salvador deserve uh, due process protections and it's important to not undermine uh, their rights and not get them back into uh, trafficking. Uh, Madeline made reference to evidence-based programs, and I believe that all of our dollars are so precious, uh, tax dollars, they all need to be evidence-based with some uh, ability to have programs that are demonstration projects and allow for new ideas and innovation. But I find that often the, the whole term evidence-based and that something is not sufficiently evidence-based uh, is just an excuse to deny services. And one of the best examples of the total contradiction, indeed hypocrisy, over this subject in Washington is what happened the last week that we were in session. And that is that the, num the amount of dollars, the research dollars, as a part of the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families program that we used to call generally welfare, was eliminated entirely, zeroed out. Uh, and uh, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families was actually the only major uh, program that was cut. This was all the result of uh, some budgetary issues and how the baseline of the budget was scored by the Congressional Budget Office, not because of anything that had gone wrong in the program. And it really demonstrates uh, the unwillingness of this Congress uh, to fund programs, even to find out and to verify that something is evidence-based. I hope that in the uh, lame duck session we'll be able uh, to address that. Another uh, whole area, and I see uh, Representative uh, Villarreal has come in also, who's been very uh, involved in health care, uh, are a whole range of health care issues that are up. The Children's Health Insurance Program also comes up. Uh, for renewal next March. Uh, and it's important that we get it reauthorized and big challenges to see it authorized. Uh, the SAMHSA program uh, and St. PJ's just got uh, $900,000 in a grant, a hard to get grant uh, th from, uh, sa through SAMHSA. Uh, it's been unauthorized for over a decade and needs to be reauthorized and authorized at a, at a higher level. On health care generally, of course, the greatest need in Texas is to see 
Medicaid expansion. Uh, I had, uh, when we did a health fair over here uh, last uh, December, the number of families that came in in response to interest about the Affordable Care Act who were too poor to get assistance uh, because of the failure to expand Medicaid was really remarkable. Uh, I believe that we've just had the ninth state with a Republican governor find a way to accept the hundred cents on the dollar that are available through the Medicaid program. I was visiting uh, in, uh, over in the at Wheatley Courts yesterday with Judge Wolf about a renewed effort. He had a health care summit in which some of you probably participated on Monday to try to get the legislature to find a way under whatever other name we might want to deal with uh, Medicaid expansion. And in talking with uh, Judge Sakai, again, how both at the federal level and the state level we might do more about child abuse by expanding access through Medicaid for both mental health treatment and substance abuse, big issues that we face. You're going to hear more about uh, the state legislative arena from an expert, or from a series of experts now uh, in a panel. Uh, I would just say that in Washington, and I think this is true at the state level, uh, so often we hear on these critical issues, well, we just can't throw money at the problem. Uh, and that's true. We don't want money wasted, and sometimes money is not the answer. But I've yet to find anyone who says that about our national security. Uh, and what I find in, with so many of my colleagues is that in throwing money at the problem, they throw words at the problem. We wouldn't do that about our national security, and we ought not to do it about our children's security. So I think our message to you, in short, is that we need to see the resources dedicated to what you're doing to really effectively fight child abuse. And we can't do it with just words, just as we need strong national security, we need strong family security, and we need the dollars at both the state and the federal level to provide those services. My office uh, is down by Santa Rosa Hospital. It's on the sidewalk so often when we cannot uh, solve a problem by passing a new bill, we can help an individual group uh, in applying for federal resources or an individual family that has come up against a federal barrier. So we welcome hearing from you at the San Antonio office and always your advice and your experience about how we can do a better job to address these critical issues. I salute each of you for your commitment to our children, and especially uh, to Dr. Fletcher for her leadership with Voices, which is really a unique organization. Thank you so much.